Hi, this is Dr. Ty Vincent. Uh, this is a, one of our LDI, relatively relevant to LDI instructional videos. This one is about breast plant related illness, which is a little bit complex and I'm, the way I'm going to approach the problem may not be the way you have thought about it before, but that's, that's kind of the point. Um, a, a lot of women in the modern era have developed some chronic inflammatory type of illnesses that some practitioner along the way somewhere or they themselves decide based on internet research is tied to their breast implants that they had put in. And there's some potential truth and linkage there to that. And then there's some things you need to understand where the breast implants are actually not related to the ongoing illness. This is a very somewhat complex topic, but it's important to, to work through the, the uh, ideas and mechanisms here. If you have... A silicone and synthetic material breast implant that ruptures and leaks out into your tissue and whatnot. I mean, you can have, certainly you can have local inflammatory reactions caused by that. You, you can have a local inflammatory sensitivity type reaction to the breast implant itself. As we know, uh, working in this field, you can be allergic or reactive to anything, basically. But if you had an immune reaction directly against that breast implant itself, that immunological reaction and the symptoms it entails will stay right there at the breast. It'll be localized. That could lead to some systemic symptoms like generalized fatigue, um, you know, a fever. If, it, if some of that gets infected with bacteria, um, you could have, you know, just some brain fogginess, mood changes, the, the general things you get when you're ill, right? When you have inflammation in general. Um, but if you end up with something that seems more like a discrete autoimmune syndrome with a whole bunch of symptoms that are nowhere near the breast and they aren't just isolated to fatigue, brain fog, general malaise, feeling crappy, right? You, you, let's say you get arthritis, you know, joint pain, you get neurological symptoms, numbness, tingling, burning sensations here and there, things that migrate around the body, muscle pain, um, you know, you end up with some named autoimmune disease like myasthenia gravis or Crohn's disease or lupus or Sjogren's syndrome, something like that, th then that no longer has any tie directly to the breast implants or what's going on with, with the surrounding tissue, at least not in terms of the antigen being the breast implant in this case, causing those symptoms directly through some like immune reaction mechanism. So it's not like, you know, if you're allergic to gluten, you might get joint pain when you eat gluten. You know, you can have distant immunological reactions that will occur against something like that. But that isn't usually what's going on with breast implant related illness. The breast implant, like so many other things that I, I've talked about in other contexts, acts as a catalyst, a catalytic event or a catalytic factor. A catalyst is something that causes a reaction to occur or speeds up a reaction, specifically in chemistry terms. But the way I use it, it's an event, it's a phenomenon, it's a trigger for the immune system in a general way to piss off the immune system. And it can instigate or initiate the development of immunological reaction patterns that afterwards have nothing to do directly with the thing itself that started it. Another good example is a vaccine. People get a vaccine series, maybe one vaccination, and then within you know a month's time afterwards, maybe they develop a bunch of food allergies they never had before, or they develop Guillain-Barre syndrome, right? Which is something we, we know as an autoimmune syndrome that can be triggered by the flu vaccine, for example. Even the modern flu vaccine, one out of 100,000 people who get it will develop Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's accepted that there's a cause and effect there. But Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a neurological paralyzing condition that's autoimmune isn't targeting the flu virus. That's not the antigen for the ongoing syndrome. Um, it's more like the analogy I use for people is it's like a car hitting you in a hit and run. So if you get hit by a car and the car drives away, which many of them do, um, <clears throat> and you're left with a broken leg and broken ribs and a head injury, those are your problems now. The car caused it, sure, the car was the catalyst in this scenario, but finding the car, getting the license plate number, the make and model, uh, putting the driver on trial for, you know, uh, aggravated assault won't help you with your injuries, right? It just won't help. Um, 
And that's the case with things like this. So because of that, getting your breast implants removed uh, is not likely to stop your chronic inflammatory problems that have ensued. It's not even likely to mitigate them, to tell you the truth, or help, you know, help them to even partial degree. If you had local inflammation around the breast, like pain, redness, swelling, uh, restricted movement because there's capsular contraction, those are reasons to get the breast implant removed, and you could expect those things to improve, of course, as a result, because you've removed the thorn in your paw, you know, that's right there where the pain and the inflammation is occurring. But these distant, systemic, and remote inflammatory processes that you believe were triggered by your breast implant, they may have been. However, removing the breast implant won't solve those problems. And many women out there on these um, internet groups and whatnot have noticed that and have voiced that. I paid all this money and went through the, you know, the disfiguring process in some cases of having my breast implants removed and I'm still sick. I still have all the problems I had before. Yeah, and that's why. And so I've had a lot of my patients over the years because I deal with people who have these inflammatory processes going on and they ask, they'll ask, I have breast implants, could that be the reason? Will that solve the problem for me? <clears throat> and then I, I ask them those key questions. Do you have inflammatory symptoms right at the breast? And, and when they don't, which is in almost every case, actually of the women I talk to, they don't have those things. I, I tell them it, it's probably not going to make any difference to remove your breast implants. Just, you know, we now have this, systemic inflammatory issue or focus inflammatory issue we have to treat as its own entity. And there is a lot of diversity there. You can give me a hundred women with breast implants and their breast implants triggered some immunological phenomenon. They may have a hundred different specific immunological problems. It's not like breast implant illness causes this kind of immune reaction. You don't get that. It's more like food allergy. Like one person who's allergic to corn will have bloody diarrhea, somebody else will have asthma, somebody else will have joint pain, somebody else will get migraine headaches, right? Same kind of process. So we have to start at the beginning with these women um, and find out what all their symptoms are and how the pattern seems to play out and what makes it worse, what makes it better. The breast implants may or may not have played a role with the cause of the problem, but they are no longer the problem in terms of what we have to do to treat it, to find a solution. If you remove your breast implants, will you perhaps avoid future immunological problems? You know, like, because if they were a trigger to start up one immunological problem, maybe you want to get them out so you don't develop other future immune problems. There's an argument to be made there. Like, so you're like, okay, these things are bad. If, if you think they're linked, <clears throat> um, and, and they may be, they may not be. I mean, a lot of the women I talked to who have breast implants they had other much more obvious reasons why they developed their immune problems, and it's probably got nothing to do with the breast implants whatsoever. So it isn't that everybody should just go running out removing their breast implants to avoid having allergies or autoimmune diseases in the future, because it's going to be a, a fraction of the women who have breast implants that, that end up having that problem tied to them. So it's, it's a difficult issue, and it, it has to be addressed case by case with a doctor who has some broad clinical understanding of these problems and some experience with this to try to help you make that decision for yourself because it's no small thing to get your breast implants removed. Um, <clears throat> so you should not just rush to conclusions about your breast implants being related to your illness. <clears throat> you shouldn't just rush to get them out in hopes that it's going to cure your other, you know, seemingly distant or unrelated immunological problems because it probably isn't, unfortunately. And I work with a number of those women, too. So I got my breast implants out. I was really hoping that would fix it. and It didn't. So we start back with the same process I go through with everybody else. You know, what is, what is going on? What are symptoms do you have? When did they start? How does it progress? What, what, res, what does it respond to? The same process as everything else. And the breast implants are not a useful piece of the puzzle, actually, in terms of information. Other similar things along that vein, which is probably do a different video about, but I'll mention here, include like dental disease problems. People will, will think that it's their mercury fillings that triggered their immunological problems. And maybe there's some mechanism there by which the, the mercury leaching out did foul up your immune system to some extent and contribute to the development of immune problems downstream. True, in some cases. But getting your mercury fillings removed just like getting your breast implants removed isn't going to stop the madness that you're dealing with now. Root canal teeth, another real big one. Getting root, a root canal is something no one should ever get. 
Just period. You should never get a root canal. It's a dead, festering, gangrenous tooth left in your mouth. It's a site of infection and a nidus of inflammation that can become systemic problems or contribute to the development of systemic immune problems anyway. But again, if that's happened to you, getting your root canal teeth pulled out is not usually going to fix the problems that you now have. Scraping out the cavity and going through all this kind of expensive, painful procedure with your teeth isn't likely to stop your autoimmune problems. Could it prevent new ones from occurring and future problems from occurring? Yeah, maybe. So I'm not advising against it, but but do it understanding what benefit you're hoping to reap from it and don't have unrealistic expectations. If you get all of these things removed from your body that don't belong, mercury fillings and, and you know do heavy metals detox and you get your breast implants out and you get your root canal teeth pulled out and whatever else, and you still have your inflammatory problems, don't be surprised. And at that point in time, you can work with somebody like me or another LDI practitioner or somebody else who has some technique for neutralizing inflammatory problems and maybe get it cleared up. And you could perhaps make the argument theoretically that having done that work and gotten those things out of your body, maybe that makes you more successful in the process of, of resolving your immune inflammatory issues with one of these techniques. Maybe. But I can tell you that I've treated many, many, many women who still had their breast implants in and it works just fine without having to remove them. And many more people who have mercury amalgam fillings or root canal teeth. And I don't advise people that they have to remove any of this stuff before we treat them because it works anyway. You know, um, it's all about the future. Like, am I going to prevent the development of new problems by removing this factor in the equation? And maybe you will. But it isn't something that's mandatory to do in order to get better with what you're battling right now. And it isn't something you have to do before you work with somebody like me. So hopefully that helps some people out there understand this issue and how it might relate to your illness. And maybe help guide your decision making through a difficult process of what to do about your health. Thanks. Thanks.